this is Lisa with Holland Designs Crochet and today I thought I would show you a little bit of an inside look at how I often create a new design. Of course there's many different ways that that can happen and different things that I'm inspired by but for instance this blanket that I'm currently working on which I have not yet named but it's a cable blanket and I'm making it for uh, a new baby and I'm going to basically take this knitted cardigan photo and this particular cable and go ahead and make that into a crocheted cabled blanket that has that same type of a repetition of cabling. So what I've done with this photo is I, I just grabbed it from the internet, saved it in a design ideas folder, and today is the day that I'm going to create this design. And so I use math and look at the pattern, I look at the stitches and decide how many stitches I'll need to create my blanket, what multiples I'll need, and what I'll be doing. So I write some notes for myself and I sometimes make a stitch diagram and count the stitches and come to a starting stitch count based on how big I want this blanket to be. So I've done all that this morning and I'm using this uh, four ply acrylic yarn um, that I have had on hand for a while. I've got quite a bit of this soft gray baby yarn. So I'm going to be using that for my, my sample. And I'm using an H hook for this particular blanket. So I've already begun and uh, started with my foundation chain, my first row, second row. This is the third row that I'm currently working on. And so I'm just going to demonstrate for you how we do some of the techniques that we use with cables often. So for this blanket on row three, we are going to be doing some front post double crochets, worked around the double crochet stitches two rows below. So we had row one, we had single crochet and double crochets repeated across and row two was just single crochet. So on row three, whenever we get to a double crochet stitch, we're going to be working a front post double crochet around the post of that stitch. And in this pattern we have two front post double crochets worked around two double crochets, two rows, two rows below. Each time we have a repetition of post stitches, there's two of them with a single crochet in between. And whenever we work those post stitches, we are then skipping the single crochets that are directly behind those post stitches. And so those are being skipped and then the single crochets in between the post stitches are being worked. So I mentioned in the pattern that the single crochets of the even rows are always going to be mentioned as either being skipped or worked. And the skipped single crochets are always behind the post stitches because the post stitches are replacing the single crochets in the stitch count. Okay, so that is what your row three will look like when you are working on it. You can see the texture beginning to develop. And I'll work a few more rows and then I'll, I'll also show you how to do the twist when we get to the twist part, portion of the pattern. This is row five now that I'm working on and we have our first cable twist in the center. So we've got the post stitches at either side and then the cables twist at the center. So I'll just show you how we're doing this. Again, row five. So the first two double crochets here, we have, again, two front post double crochets, two, or two rows below, and always skipping the single crochet stitches directly behind the post stitches. And when we get to the cable twist, we're going to simply be changing the order in which we're working the post stitches. So over the next section here, this is where we're going to be working the twist. So for the cable twist, we're going to skip the first two post stitches and skip the single crochet in the center. And we're instead going to work our post stitches around stitches three and four of those four post stitches there. So we're going to skip the first two post stitches and the center single crochet and work front post double crochet around 
the next two post stitches. So that is the first half of our cable twist, you can see there. And then behind that, we're gonna have five sewn crochets behind those post stitches. We're gonna skip the first two sewn crochets and we're going to insert our hook into the third sewn crochet and work a sewn crochet there. That's the center sewn crochet of the twist and it secures our twist. And then we're gonna go back to finish the first half of the twist, which means we're gonna go back and work our two front posts, double crochets around the posts of the first two double crochet, crochets that we had skipped. So we're just working those stitches in a different order than usual to create that twist. You can see what that looks like. And then from there, we're just gonna go on and work the sim crochet that follows that twist and then finish up our section with the last two front posts double crochets of that section okay so that is the second second section there so you can see the two post stitches the twist and then the, the final two post stitches following that in between each section we have three sewn crochets in between so you can see that so i'll finish this row and then i'll come back and show you how we work the sewn crochets across the twists so that we are sure to maintain our stitch count on the next row okay, i'm finishing up row six so this is just single crochet and pretty simple so as you're working back across the twisted areas you're just going to want to make sure that you have five single crochets placed across that twist and it might be just slightly difficult to see where the stitches are because you do have that twisted um, stitch there but just do your best and um, the thing is on this row we do want to maintain our stitch count but if, if you're off by one or two here or there it doesn't matter because it won't be noticeable at all and you will find that your stitch count will be perfect on the next row when you're going back to working the post stitches you'll just end up adjusting if you need to by uh, just skipping maybe one less stitch or something at the back when you're skipping the single crochets so it's not a huge deal and very easy to um, adjust if you found you were off by a stitch here or there but that was the end of row six so I've done my best I haven't paid super close attention to it to make but it should be pretty close um, so I'll just begin to show you row seven so you can see how we work the post stitches when we're coming out of the twist. So on row seven, I'm just starting with my three single crochets at the edge here. Again, I'm going to be doing my two front post double crochets. And then I'm also going to have my next single crochet. Okay, and then when I get to the twist area, I should have five single crochets across there. And then you can see I've got the post stitches. And I'm going to be working into those again. You can see here at the edge, you've got two post stitches. So um, it is slightly hidden within a twist, but you should be able to pick those up pretty easily. So you're just going to, again, work the first post stitch and then the second post stitch and then work a center single crochet again at the center of the twist so you'll skip two single crochets work the center single crochet there and then finish your cable again with the last two post stitches So you can see how that's going to start to, to build out again with the post stitches there. And then um, again, the next single crochet and the final two post stitches of that section.
Okay, so that's what row seven looks like. And what I meant about adjusting your stitches, if you happen to have too many sewn crochets or too few, it'll just mean that you'll have skipped, you know, maybe one stitch or you might skip three stitches. It just sort of depends a little bit on what you had there, but not, not to be worried about if you had an extra stitch or one less stitch over those twists. It's nothing that's going to be very noticeable at all and won't affect your pattern since you're going to be getting back to your perfect stitch count on this row when you're working the actual post stitches. You can see I've gotten a bit further into the pattern. I've got three twist rows completed and now I'm going to work the next twist row. This one is called a double twist row. So what we're going to do rather than having the twist in the center here, we're going to have two twists at the sides. So these, these four stitches will be twisted and then these four. So that's what I'm going to do here. Everything else is the same. The cable twist is still the same stitch. It's just that we're doing two of them and we're doing these together. So I've done my first three single crochets of this row. And so rather than just doing the post stitches here, I'm going to actually skip those two and skip that single crochet in the center. And I'm going to do my first uh, front post double crochet here around this stitch. Second one there. And then in the same manner as before, go back and pick up the center single crochet there that we had skipped. Work our single crochet there and then come back and do the uh, front post double crochets here at the side. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and do the single crochet in the center. And then repeat that process again Um, between these with these four four stitches here so we're gonna skip these two skip the single crochet do the two post stitches at the side here so on this particular row there's two twists in each section of the cable repetition and then go back and work the single crochet in the center to anchor that twist and then lastly come back and do the two post stitches here to complete that second twist. Okay, and then from there, I just move on and do my three single crochets in between the sections. Okay, so that's the first double twist completed for this row. I'll just repeat that all the way across. And I was just going to say one thing here. You can see there's a little bit of a uh, curling sometimes. Um, it's not too bad, but you you might just have a little bit of a curling as you're starting. And that's very normal with cabling. And so it will flatten out and lay ni nicely as the blanket builds and as there's more weight added to the fabric. And also I'm going to be doing an edging around all four sides. So that'll help everything to lay nice and neatly and you won't have any any kind of curling or anything anymore. So just keep that in mind. If you see a bit of curling, it's nothing to worry about initially. This is the finished rope chain cable blanket. So the sample is 38 inches by 32 inches. And that includes the knit look ribbed edging that I did all around uh, approximately an inch wide. And I've used this edging many times before, so this is my half double slip stitch and back loops only knit look rib edging. The difference with this one is I decided to give it a bit more of a structured edge, partly because uh, using the four ply fingering weight yarn for this sample, I needed a little bit more structure uh, just so that I had a nice flat straight edge. And so I did a slip stitch in the end of the ribbed row and a chain one in between. And I did that all the way all the way around the entire blanket, so that gives it a beautiful finished edge. And this blanket is now completed and going to be sent off uh, as a gift to a coworker, a coworker's new baby. So um, my husband has a coworker that announced a new baby boy was born. So 
it was a perfect time to design a custom blanket for them. So I hope that you enjoy this new design. It will be available separately and also in the 2024 Afghan Club. So I will put links to both of those in the description box.